name's Tom Birmingham from Club and Resort Chef Association. We are joined by a panel of experts here, and I'll let everybody introduce themselves to talk about the supply chain and what to expect in the near future. Uh, this will be um, primarily uh, Jeff McGee uh, forum to do this. Uh, he is the expert from CISO, Cisco. So, Jeff, if you could introduce yourself, please. Yeah, happy to do so. Uh, thanks for having me on today. Uh, again, Jeff McGee. I work in the supply chain uh, area for Cisco Corporation. Um, myself and my teams are responsible for uh, integrating uh, Cisco as a food distributor with uh, with many different types of multi-unit account customers, uh, Club Vigure and, and your entities uh, being within that realm. So we are an organization that helps connect all that is Cisco from the world's largest food distributor with customers such as yourselves, both on an ongoing basis as well as during uh, challenging times such as these. Cam Schultz. Hey everybody, uh, Tom, thanks for rounding us all, all up and, and for Club and Resort and doing this format. Uh, my name is Cam Schultz. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Club Procure. We're a, a division of Food Buy, who's North America's largest food service procurement organization. Uh, our division specifically works with clubs and resorts uh, around North America. Uh, we have about a little over 4,000 participating members across the country at, at city clubs, uh, country clubs, golf clubs, and, and daily food properties as well. So uh, really looking forward to the format and, and the conversation today. James Kramer. Hi, everybody. Uh, Tom, thanks for uh, putting this together. Um, my name is James Kramer, the executive chef of the Hinsdale Golf Club, uh, located in uh, Clarendon Hills, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Um, also president of the Chicago Club Chefs Association, and happy to be on this call. Thanks, James. Uh, chef Rich Hoffman. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Rich Hoffman, executive chef of the Country Club of Maryland. Uh, certified executive chef, of American Academy of Chefs. And, uh, Happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Great, uh, Jeff. Let's let's dive into it. Um, let, let's start with uh, the kind of short and long term uh, viability of the markets that you see here uh, coming uh, in the in the near future, and what to expect, maybe even a little further out. Sure, um, I'll start first with with kind of the food supply. I think that's uh, probably what's got. You know, top of mind for a lot of folks, both uh, in the food away from home as well as the grocery space. You know, prior to this, you know, if it's, it, maybe it's a little known fact that roughly 50% of the food consumed um, by people was done in food away from home environments. Um, with Since this pandemic, that has drastically shifted um, with more flowing through uh, grocery retailers. And so, so with that change in supply chain, food distributors uh, have had to pivot um, in a sense of how do you continue to maintain that food supply chain? Because the grocery retailers and their supply chains can't sustain that a level of throughput and that, that amount of volume. So we continue to uh, retain very close relationships with our suppliers that is continuing to service those food service spaces that are operating uh, and changing on how they're showing up with the consumer, uh, as well as understanding what is their throughput and change on how they look at products. Um, the products themselves, I think, uh, and the commodities uh, associated with them, I think are gonna be uh, somewhat volatile, specifically in the beef and dairy space. Um, and I think that really is trying to get an understanding of what the outlook of how the, company, uh, the country reopens uh, and is allowed to open by states and by geographies. And so there's more to come on that, but those are the spaces that we see that there's probably the, the most volatility, the most opportunity for volatility. And um, our category management teams are continuing to stay very close with those suppliers to understand how we get ahead of those and how we understand, you know, to maintain the continuity of our supply, whether it be for food away from home or the retailers that we're now servicing. What's on, uh, what's on the radar, uh, Jeff? What's, what are some of the real things that uh, maybe you're, uh, you're worried about or some things that we as uh, some of the end users need to be concerned about in the coming weeks, commodity wise? I think the, the opportunity is with the level of skew proliferation. So um, we've been able to enjoy uh, for a long time getting the items and the breadth of items that we've wanted from given manufacturers. 
with the opportunity that they face with ensuring that their workers within their plants are maintaining safe distances and remaining healthy and creating the, the productivity and throughput, I think the opportunity is that the, the amount of SKUs that are available, the proliferation availability, and the uniqueness of some of the items may be uh, going away or limited on the short term. I think that's, uh, that's something that's at least top of mind for us to understand where given customers have been expected and, uh, and use certain items on their menus that may not be available that have to be transitioned to a different item. Again, that item may be seen as something that differentiates themselves, but the sheer throughput uh, and volume from a given plant may not be able to create the turnover and changeover needed to produce those, those various items. Are there, are there specifics? Uh, uh, can we talk about pork and, meat and beef? Um, we dive into some of those you know, specific um, sources, food products? Uh, we certainly can. I guess the question I have is, is what specifically would you want to dive into in those areas? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of plants, we hear about all the pork plants that are shutting down, a lot of Tyson plants. Uh, these, are, these are all big producers. Uh, are things like ham, bacon, um, pork loins, tenderloins, um, pork, you know, pork products. Do you see some of those, uh, the supplies being affected, the prices being affected as a, as a cause of that specifically? So I would say the prices are, are, are being minimally impacted right now. Uh, the volume and quantities available, you know, with the relationships that we have, we've been able to sustain you know, meeting the needs of the items that we've asked for and the quantities we're, we're needing to supply our customers. Um, I, but we do see uh, some volatility in those those commodities, just really with the uncertainty of how fast some of those plants can come back online to 100%. Uh, many of those plants are operating, but they're operating at a much reduced capacity. And so that's driving up some of the costs. But from a, from a supply and quantity perspective, um, we're able to attain and achieve that, uh, at least from our front. I, I can't speak for other food distributors, uh, and others out there, uh, but with our relationships, we've been able to maintain you know, the volume and the, 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 I guess we'd say the capacity that, that we've needed in this time. Um, can you touch base on, on clubs in particular? Uh, we are all club chefs here and involved in the, in, the, in the club business as a whole. Can you talk about um, that, what the clubs uh, in the food chain mean for a big company like Cisco? Yeah, I, I would say um, not just clubs, but, but everybody, every customer is important to Cisco, sure. um, small or large, and they all play a space in, in our food supply chain. Um, I think there's, there's an interesting space within the club dynamic is um, there's uniqueness across clubs, but at the same time, there's similarities in how they operate, the way they interact with the distributor, and our ability to continue to service them. Um, they don't generate typically the, the larger drops that we may have on some uh, chain accounts, but at the same time, they are, they are, I would say, easier to do business with. They've got the space and the capacity when it's, when it's our time to show up with the delivery um, you know, at the locations. It, it affords us the opportunity to be a little bit more efficient uh, with those locations, which is, which is great. Um, I would have an interesting question maybe for James or, or Rich is, you know, in this time, um, how are they seeing the impact of distributors at their locations with the downturn of the volume and, and the pivoting of how you are, are servicing your, your clientele? And is that something a distributor can uh, help provide some some outlet or uh, support? You know, I, I would say, you know, uh, with us right now, we're doing very limited. Um, so I haven't had too much of an issue, but I, I have noticed a lot with um, – you know, with Cisco and you know Cisco, uh, my produce company Testa, that some of the our normal specs right now are being altered a little bit. Um, delivery days, delivery times for sure. Um, you know, everything's coming much later in the afternoon because I'm just assuming most places aren't open in the mornings right now. Um, so you know, very limited supply days, uh, things like that. Um, Matt. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense, and, and you're right. The the, the item assortment uh, and the, the specifications, you know, again, as I mentioned, the the opportunity for the breadth of items um, is limited in certain uh, capacities, and the impact of deliveries. You know, we we had our earnings call yesterday, um, and some of the you know things that were mentioned by Kevin Herc on our, our CEO uh, and our CFO around how we're going to market. Um, 
you know, our ability to change with, with variable labor uh, in the workforce allows us, while we're still having density on our trucks, if you think about the amount of routes we're running um, are significant less. So to be able to spread that volume out throughout the day is unfortunately how we've had to operate, which, which can create some disruption uh, at the operator level um, because they're not, you know, they're used to getting a certain delivery on maybe a day that uh, is got less capacity available or the time that the delivery is made uh, perhaps is, is changed. So, so with that, I think one of the, the, the key messages that I would have is, is it's probably more important now than ever that the communication um, channel with your distributor rep um, is, is heightened. Uh, as you as you have change in your workforce, as you have changes as the economy opens with how you look to service your, your clients from a food perspective on how you know that can affect Cisco and where that volume changes or the, or the demand changes uh, could come through that channel of your distributor rep uh, to help try to alleviate where possible uh, the disruptions in your business. Jeff, can I ask a question? Are there any, has Cisco had any discussions about allocations of products? I noticed now, you know, it started down south, it kind of, it's up here now, like Costco's, uh, they're limiting the amount of items that consumers can buy at grocery stores. Have you guys thought about that as far as a food distributor? From the, from the food space, no, we have, we have been very uh, pointed in the PPE space uh, for healthcare. Um, I would say that's the only thing that we have taken a stance on, if you will, to be mindful of PPE going to those environments where there is a higher risk uh, of infection. But from uh, from a food point of view, no, we've not made allocations at this point. Cool. Uh, uh, Rich, if, go ahead, I was just yeah. gonna cue, cue you in, Rich. Um, what have you seen from your end? We talked a little bit yesterday, we were talking about the meat and the availability of fresh uh, beef in your part of the, part of the area. What else is, have you been affected by either delivery-wise or product-wise? Yeah, we had a couple of, you know, uh, we have a couple of uh, down days where there's no deliveries, which isn't a big deal for us. Um, but at my, more of the things that I'm looking for is communication of all the different products and the opportunities that are out there with our purveyors. And the, the communication, I feel like when this first happened, chicken wings just went you know, completely south. I was buying for a dollar a pound where before this started, they were $2 and up a pound. You know, if someone would have called me when it first happened and said, we need to move X, Y, and Z, and this is what's available, these are the prices, it would have helped me out instead of waiting, I guess, and I mean, looking for someone to be more proactive with that communication to the, the end user of, hey, Right now, Tenderloin's not, you know, a big seller, and it, there's opportunities to buy that at a good price. But chicken breast is in high demand because the grocery store is only the chicken breast, so buys and wings are extraordinarily cheap. I don't know what else good buys are out there. I, I would be buying more from the distributors. In the, our, our model changed so drastically when it started. We went from all a la carte to banquets. Now we're curbside family meals, a la carte. I, I mean, we're doing everything to try and generate business and everything's open. Up. There's no rules right now. So if there's a way for me to take advantage of a good buy that any purveyor has, I'm, I'm wide open, but I don't know how do I get that information? I guess that's my, my question. Yeah, I think that's a that's an interesting uh, point, and and part of that is is you know the, I think the two way communication. How is Cisco and how is how's your food distributors you know reaching out to you when there are opportunities? I think this hits um, everyone uh, I would say by surprise at such a rate that it was everybody running for every opportunity, and I think there wasn't as as coordinated of an effort that could allow us to be maybe more effective uh, in the d distribution space, be more effective in and as volume shifts to different certain commodities that create opportunities for uh, price opportunities, you know, in, in your space, um, could have certainly been been one of those. Um, and I think that's that's something that that we continue to look at, and I know other food distributors are as well. But the idea of how do you create better visibility to the end customer for items availability and pricing, um, and Cisco continues to move down the path of trying to be on the forefront of how do we create technology in more of that B2C space that gives you visibility 
to items, commodity pricing, and availability um, in more real time than perhaps we have done in the past. And I'm excited for the opportunities that we're looking forward to. Um, just wish we were maybe closer to that than we perhaps are right now. Jeff, I was um, reading an article in Club and Resort Business yesterday, and it was a single, a golf cart for a single person. I thought that was pretty unique in, in how things are changing for this time. What kind of new products do you see coming out of um, these, these last months um, as, as Cisco brainstorms themselves? Yeah, I think one of the most unique things that we have been able to pivot is this idea of a pop-up shop. Um, that is by far and away the most unique thing that we have created and have done very successfully for um, over 10,000 customers is to change a traditional dining uh, area into a pop-up shop where people can come in and shop more like a, a retail location. Um, that has probably been one of the big, biggest changes we've made. Um, secondarily, I would say uh, we've also in certain markets created the opportunity for direct to consumer sales so instead of going to an ma um, or having a delivery come to your location you could actually log in online it's a limited uh skew assortment with pricing availability uh item availability and you could place the order and go pick up uh in a a um, i would say a social distance uh, minimal touch uh environment so those are probably the two biggest things from a I would say a service offering, if you will, that Cisco has embarked upon and been very successful here in the last few weeks. Have you given any thought to um, small boxes, sample boxes? I know a lot of local purveyors around here, produce companies are offering uh, a box with a, a two heads of romaine and, and a, a couple tomatoes. Has Cisco given some thought into maybe um, a box where people have a, a meal for three or four days? So in the produce space, absolutely. So our division of Fresh Point, which is the nation's largest fresh produce uh, supplier, um, they are doing that. Uh, and they have been doing that for some time. I think even before COVID-19, that's an opportunity that they create um, these, these meal kits or meal boxes for families. Um, I think we use the average of a family of four for roughly a week's worth of fruits and vegetables. Uh, and there's a small box and a large box that are opportunities that they are able to purchase. Um, in the, the traditional broadline space, um, we have not traditionally done that. Uh, the operation itself is not um, up to this point been set up to uh, efficiently and effectively uh, kind of pick and pack. We do uh, what we call splits, which are break things down based on uh, items associated with the customer, but not in a traditional sense. Um, one of the biggest things, however, that Cisco is participating in, and that's um, the Feeding America initiative by the US government that's being led by the USDA. Um, they, uh, I think they've communicated to the USDA is that it's going to be $300 million a month of uh, groceries in the dairy, meats, and produce space um, that are going to be procured by the government through uh, suppliers. Um, distributors will distribute that and then to uh, 200 plus food banks across the United States and they're, they're extended affiliates. Um, so that process is going on right now and in that uh, Feeding America initiative, is the creating of a, a box, if you will, of a handful of, of meats and cheeses separately, of course, um, to be distributed to food banks uh, around the country. And Cisco is, is looking to participate that, has submitted our bid, and looking forward to helping support uh, Feeding America for the U.S. That's great. I, I see um, um, local Chicago uh, doing some of that. And Chuck's pulling up on social media. So that's great. Uh, Rich and James Kramer, would you guys talk about your to-go packaging uh, briefly? Uh, are, you, are you using a broadliner for that? Do um, you see your supplies in jeopardy there? And then I'll turn it to Jeff to, to get his spin on how Cisco has shifted their maybe packaging or to-go products. Rich? Yeah, no, I haven't had any trouble with uh, procuring any of the packaging. I, the big problem I'm going to run into is Maryland's getting away from all styrofoam in the next couple of, really, it's in the next six weeks. So switching from that to more of uh, eco-friendly packaging might cause a problem the longer this goes on, but I'm not sure what that looks like in six weeks. Okay. 
James, um, I know you're just kind of getting back into it again, but uh, any problems with getting any supplies for takeout, carryout products? You know, when we first started, we were doing just strictly a la carte uh, when everything kind of first happened. Um, we were changing. It was every. It seemed like every truck I was getting was a different type of container. Um, we couldn't really set our specs, and what we used to buy didn't work for the new program. Um, so we were kind of just changing everything. And now I'm just kind of switched just to family packs, and I'm using a lot more catering, you know, type, you know, aluminum foil pans for easy reheating, and those going into, you know, large corrugated boxes. Um, and I haven't had any trouble yet. Uh, we have just just started getting back into it. Um, but I do have a storeroom full of like mismatched, uh, to go products at this point. We got six different bags, five different types of, uh, deli containers. So that's going to be fun trying to blow all those out. Jeff, how has Cisco shifted there? Uh, is it supplies on the fly? Uh, supplies on the fly provides a lot of that. We do also provide out of our broad line space, uh, to go packaging. I think Rich kind of made mentioned one thing that is is top of mind for us as well is as various geographies and markets change uh, to more sustainable uh, products, um, which in itself creates the, I think one of the issues that James is experiencing, right, is the opportunity to have this mismatched um, set of, of packaging for to go and it doesn't always fit with what may, you may be offering. Um, so what we're trying to do is, is again align with our suppliers to create more specific uh, I would say programs of you know, package sets, if you will, that would be for the different types of to-go, whether it be large family style or individualized uh, personal uh, to-go from like, say, a, a, you know, if you're going to get a burger and fries to-go versus the opportunity to maybe reheat uh, a larger dish um, as a family. Great. Guys, we're, we're, we're pushing our 30-minute uh, time limit here. Um, if I could just ask Rich or James to chime in on any last questions they might have for Jeff, uh, anything from a Cisco standpoint? I, I, I do know that Cisco, at least in the Chicago area, was very proactive very quickly. Um, and it seemed to be as a company. I know they set some dates uh, really early on kind of how, as a company, they were going to – go forward and i just was curious if those dates have changed at all and what the their future looks like as far as getting back the some sort of normalcy as far as bringing back uh for load employees getting you know uh, more regular delivery days things like that uh, that's a great question um so yeah i know gary uh, the president there in chicago is a great guy um and he runs a very uh, very well operation uh, in chicago and for so sure. what i would say is the dates that, that gary has set um, i'm not privy if he's changed any of those um, I will say that as we have volume uh, come back and, and uptick, um, we have brought associates back from furlough as needed. Um, we have not to a point where we've made a decision on when we would actually change and, and re-increase our delivery days. So I know we have some, some restrictions around certain days and times, um, but as volume starts to come back and as parts of the country open up, I can see us uh, snapping back, if you will, quite quickly. Um, our furloughed associates are, are ready to get back to work. Um, they are, you know, it, it's amazing. The, the, the it's in the warehouse and delivery, they really take pride in their work, and and they would much rather be doing that work than than sitting at home. Um, so as soon as we're able to get them back, we certainly will have them. Agreed. Rich, any last minute thoughts or comments? Yeah, as as we're in the process uh, in the northeast of changing seasons, is there going to be any back to one the seasonality of foods and produce that aren't picked or harvested? I noticed uh, some shortages or things that weren't usually readily available in the spring, kind of making its way through yet. So, any uh, info on that? I don't have specifics around that, but I think that is a, a good call out. The opportunity for growers to pivot. Um, what they're planting uh, based on that demand changing significantly. Um, most of the, the growing seasons and where they've had to plant that, that uh, the seeds uh, have already occurred. Um, so again, unless it's, it's traditional uh, impacted yields from uh, a poor uh, growing season itself from a, from a weather uh, perspective, I can't see them changing dramatically. But yeah, there has been some pivoting in what they're planting based on demand, but I haven't seen anything or heard anything that's, that would be, um, I would say large shifting in any particular produce or vegetable section. Got Jeff, have, has there been issues with um, any any products crossing the border from uh, Mexico coming in? 
Um, so I would say the only problem or, or difficulty that's been faced is really the transportation challenges um, in a sense that, you know, they themselves had volume downturn. So making sure that they've got drivers and, and tractor trailers uh, meeting that capacity, but items uh, flowing across the border have been able to continue to flow um, through the right channels and with the right uh, quality assurance and, and QA activity. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Uh, that's our time. Uh, we appreciate uh, Jeff uh, coming on, Chef Kramer, Chef Hoffman and, and Cam Schultz. Everybody thanks. I hope it was enlightening and um, hope, to, hope there's better times to come here real soon. So appreciate all the time, everybody. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate thanks, everybody. it. Thanks, everybody. You bet.